Yo. What's up? My name is Waffles. Now, before you maybe leave a main comment, for those of you who were paying attention, you've noticed that I put hardcore in the thumbnail, hardcore in the title, but if you were paying a little bit of attention, you would have seen in the top right that it says Affliction League and not Hardcore Affliction. And to make a long story short, you know, we're in game. I'm doing a zero hero challenge, but basically hardcore trade dies after a month into the league. If the league is really fun and I want to keep playing, personally, I don't really want to keep playing SSF, so I play softcore trade. But that doesn't mean that I have to be okay with deaths, right? So if you're in game, type forward slash deaths. Do it right now. Do it before me. And you can see I have zero deaths. So basically, I'm just playing hardcore and softcore trade. It's a fun little thing. I call it a Nuzlocke. And, you know, that's that. Now, on to what the rest of this video is. Well, it's about DD. And in my opinion, from my experience and my research and my path of building, I believe Detonate Dead is the best magic finder to push T16s deathless. Now, I said a lot of words there, and I meant those in that specific order. T16s deathless. And you don't have to be, you know, okay with deathless, obviously, right? I'm going to give you the tools and the build, and you can just do whatever you want throw her into crazy t16 mobs see if she survives you know you can do all that for me i just want to give you the template but like all my other videos i like to answer uh, as many questions i can think of off the top of my head that people would want to know so i don't waste anyone's time and if this builds for you then you have your answer quick all right so let's just get to a couple quick questions you know do you need a mage blood to push t16s no i waited until i had a mage blood to push t16s but again that's just a hardcore mentality rather than just gunning for it and hoping and praying right little side note um hardcore is a mentality and it's not really always about the build i can give this build to one of my friends who's learning poe and he will die in the very first map even if i put no damage mods on it it's just how you play and your mentality about playing but that's specifically to hardcore i think most people playing this just want a build that's really tanky that can just kill crazy shit in t16s and not have to worry right and that's where i think this build can absolutely excel so no you don't need the mage blood it just adds another layer of tankiness numbers all make sense in my opinion you could take my mid-tier set of gear and go to t16s which goes on to the next question you know how does dd work and things like that well here's the deal detonate dead is probably one of the most researched calculated and solved builds in poe it's been a meta build for four years now. I wish it was nerfed more than it already has been. But you know, that that's not a part of this video. That's a side note, but it's not. And when I was looking and researching for builds, I came to the conclusion that Detonate Dead was probably the best build I could play to do exactly what I wanted to do. So because of that, I won't be going into extreme detail. Most of my guides are usually newer player friendly. This one's going to be very surface level on DD. And I'm just going to be talking about different things you can do at different gear sets, depending on how much money you have. And that's mostly it. But if you wanted a quick rundown, long story short, why Detonate Dead, I think, is the best. In low tier maps, it doesn't actually feel good. Um, I mf with this, you know, tier 4, tier 7, all the way to tier 16. And you actually feel the worst in tier 4. Tier 7, you're fine. And I spent a majority of my time in tier 7. I found a mage blood in tier 7. I found a headhunter. I found, you know, soul takers and all that stuff. I farmed all of my money in tier 7s. And it's fine. But if I took that same gear and just went into T16s, I would literally just do double damage. And that's just because, you know, the way mob HP and corpse life works. So DD excels because unlike other builds, it gets stronger the harder the content. And 90% of builds just don't work like that. So hopefully that answers your question of why and the intricacies of why DD, in my opinion, is the best. Now, uh, as with most builds, I'll say there's always like some sort of negative. With Detonate Dead, the only negative I have is that with my iteration of gear here, if you're using the mid-tier set of gear and you're doing like T7s, for example, if you run into like, you know, Ignite Resistant, Soul Eater Mob or something like that, just skip it. Just skip the fucking mob. You know, I, I think most builds have that problem of you just, you run into a literal handcrafted mob that was designed to literally just fuck your life over and over again. And sometimes you just got to move on. Don't sit there and try to kill it for two minutes. Just skip the mob and move on. Detonate Dead works with, you know, a bunch of corpses around you. So if unfortunately you run into a soul eater or super fire resistant mob or something like that in T7s, then just move on. You know, it is what it is. In T16s, you can kill those mobs, 100%. Other than that, I go through T16s and honestly, I do too much damage. I blow up the Stygian Spires way too fast, which would get me to my next thing. There's going to be a section. I don't know where I'm going to put it. And I'm going to answer a few quick questions about the Stygian, the Abyss, the Abyss strategy that I, you know, I have a video that explains the Atlas, but I still get a lot of questions that people are having trouble with these fires or if like 
you know, hey, I blew it up with an explosion and it died. Is there a way around this? Things like that. So I actually have a couple of solutions and I'll go into detail about those later. And during that part, I'll also talk about what level of juice I spent on each tier of map slash each tier of gear, right? So in tier four, so if I was playing, you know, the super broke boy version, what was I using, right? And then at what point did I start adding like sextants and stuff? So there's gonna be a small section. It won't be too long, but I'll try to fit as much as I can in a short amount of time later on. But if you just want that, you know, timestamps are your friend. You can fast forward to me in the future. I think another question people would want to know is, can you do, you know, a uh, chain reaction, I believe it's called. And my answer would be, yeah, sure, totally can. I haven't made a POB for it. I would have to sit here and really, you know, think about it, put it together. I'd have to probably say, change it to a necromancer. But hey, if somebody wants to see a chain reaction version, then let me know. Uh, I'm going to be honest. It's not something I've really thought of. And POBs do take quite a bit of time to make, if, especially because I like to min max them. So nobody has any problems with these builds. So. It'll probably take quite a bit of effort, but if people want it, then I wouldn't be against trying to make one work. But as of right now, I play DD Ignite, so that's what you're going to get here. Aside from that, I can't really think of too much. So like I said, this is going to be more surface level. I'll talk about things like, you know, fourth vow, my gearing options, how I crafted the very few pieces of gear. But that's it. I think let's, uh, let's just get to it. All right. So obviously you make sure that you switch it to, you know, broke boy broke boy broke boy ain't nothing wrong with being a broke boy but you don't have to be a broke boy for very long so hopefully by the end of this you'll be able to get this over with now broke boy gear you know change all the tree the skills the items to you know the broke boy version it's not a big difference just a couple changes but that's it the skills are essentially the same the whole time the only difference is that on the low end i recommended uh blood rage instead of casting damage taking molten gel that's it though and this is all pretty straightforward i'm going to recommend like fractures and stuff but ultimately i don't think you're going to stay in this version for very long so real quick you can use a essence of fear whatever you can afford and then ideally you just hit like cast speed maybe a fire damage roll fire damage percent suffix burning damage percent suffix and you just craft fire multi on it and that's that's it um there's really not much to really explain here like i said i want to keep this a very surface level because the other gear is a little bit complicated and there's a lot going on if you wanted to get a fracture you could just get fractured cast speed but I wouldn't recommend it, especially on this scepter, because this is a elemental overload scepter. So there's probably not going to be many fractures on it. I would just roll it with essences and get something good. And there you go. It's detonate dead. Detonate dead kind of does all the work for you. If you're in higher tier maps, lower tier maps, you're definitely just going to feel a little weak no matter what your gear is. Right here, tier two suppression fracture is completely fine. Uh, I wouldn't even recommend like a ton of essences. Just use whatever cheap thing you have. Just try to get some suppression. Uh, the helmet. You can get fractured rarity and you augment for rarity and then you regal and try to get a good hp roll and then your implicit is fizz damage taken as it can be fire cold or lightning it can even be chaos i didn't get you know roll it to get chaos but fizz damage taken as chaos is actually the best i just realized that fuck and then you craft fizz damage taken as fire fourth vow um i'll explain this in more detail in the next section but yeah fourth vow nothing special now your gloves you can get fractured fractured chaos res you know roll it with uh, i'd recommend dex essences and then you just roll it and try to get some okay suppression and you really want fire exposure on every set of gear no matter what just uh kind of a core part of elementalist boots get it whatever you can doesn't really matter defines the destiny i'll explain in the next set uh, a little bit more with everything else and then cap your attributes and that's pretty much it energized armor same thing i'll explain in the next set that's pretty much it fourth vow glorious vanity energized armor now the mid tier you know the low end i don't expect a lot of people to be playing that right but the mid tier you may be in for a long time especially if you don't have a mage blood so this version i'll explain a little bit more in detail the scepter takes about three ish maybe four div depending on what you're looking for but to give you a straight up example if you've never used this website it's craft of exile so let's just make a scepter real quick Essence of Fear, we're going to guarantee minion damage. At this point, obviously, I would recommend Deafenings. And you just roll this until you hit cast speed. Uh, don't overthink it. Don't look for, you know, crazy stuff. If you hit something crazy, cool. Otherwise, you know, you just click this until you get, like, tier 3 cast speed. All right, we got tier 3 cast speed. So at this point, um, you want at least one open prefix. And there's no other prefix you can get that's useful. So you just need one open prefix, and then you need all suffixes available. So the only suffix you would have is cast speed. And then you have one prefix open to give you a visual there we remove the prefix in this case and then remove the fire damage then we got extremely lucky uh, we don't give a shit about the mana so cast speed is the only suffix one open prefix and then we multi-mod can have three this is two divines fire damage over time multiplier as a suffix 
and then the prefix is gain fire damage as extra chaos and there you go for about give or take three-ish four-ish divines this is the scepter i wore all the way until the end in order to get significantly better man it's just like not really fucking worth it you end up spending like 10 15 20 div and it's just it's not it's just not that big a deal so i wouldn't recommend it the shield i would recommend same thing as kind of the last shield but this one tier two at least fractured suppression you know tier one if you can afford it but tier two fractured suppression and i would either recommend greed essences but you really want chaos res so realistically i'd say shrieking envies i use shrieking envies for pretty much everything they're about five or six c if you buy them in bulk so shrieking essences and you're just looking for like okay life you don't care about cold res most likely at this point purity of elements take care of that for you but yeah life suppression chaos res not a big deal helmet i uh, just said it in the last version but if you didn't see that get fractured rarity prefix or suffix augment for tier one rarity so you have suffix rarity prefix rarity and then you regal and you just hope to hit hp might take you a little bit maybe a thousand alterations or something like that but eventually you'll get it and there you go multi-mod it fizz damage taken as fire rarity from mobs because you know we're a quant boy not hard to make but you know a little annoying i would say though get an armor energy shield base you kind of need to get energy shield where you can get it where you're doing eldritch battery setup stuff so you really need to get some es where you can especially if your fourth bows roll poorly so armor es rarity that's it all right fourth foul fourth foul it's there's a lot going on but i'm gonna try to make this very very simple okay so if you don't know how fourth foul works then listen up this is the whole core crux of why we're so tanky and if you know how fourth foul works then you know skip along a minute basically we want to get a lot of armor if you look over here this is kind of how much damage you can take to give you some like general numbers uh around 30k fizz max hit is most of the time what a hardcore build is going to have then le max hit can be 60 can be 70 and at that point you're like pretty fucking tanky your effective hit pool is kind of just like how many goddamn hits can you actually take right and in this case we can take quite a beating in this version without a mage blood and that's thanks to the fourth vow and the glorious vanity zabakwa setup so we get armor that armor is then put into our chaos res so without the fourth vow, our chaos res hit goes down to absolutely pitiful. But our armor is now working to protect our fizz damage. Our armor is also now working to protect our chaos res. So now your armor is working on two layers. Well, what the glorious vanity Zabakwa does is that it also makes it so that our armor will protect our fire, cold, and lightning too. So essentially your armor starts to protect everything about your entire character completely which means the more armor the better which also means the more chaos res the better because specifically what divine flesh does of zabakwa is that it means that you get five chaos res and it takes 50 percent of all elemental damage you'll take as a hit and it'll just throw that into your chaos res so long story short if you get more max chaos res in this case i have 81 on this version half of all elemental damage you take so fire cold lightning is just put into your chaos res so you're just taking less elemental damage because now you can just focus on one res and get that one upped the fourth vow works because now it's adding armor to that protection as well so get max chaos res where's the bakwa divine flesh get extra chaos res get a lot of armor and you become damn near immortal as long as you have enough recovery right so it's a little bit complicated but basically yeah you should hopefully have an idea of how it works i'd recommend a high chaos res roll. chaos res is kind of a bitch at this point gloves kind of the same thing as the last gloves high as fuck chaos res tier one suppression probably not really negotiable anymore and then i i rolled this with shrieking essences of whatever the dexterity one is if i'm smart i'll put one on screen if not then you know quick google search will solve it for you but yeah we need dex we need strength you need suppression so you got to get it where you can uh quantity boots nothing to say defiance of destiny uh best item in the game in my opinion to if you're gonna play like hardcore and map if you don't know how this works uh let's say you get hit right you lost half your hp all right so you're at 50 percent hp in a map there's a lot of things swinging at you there's a lot of things hitting you the next mob is swinging at you so before you can even react before you even notice you're at half hp the next mob has started swinging the second that mob has decided it's going to hit you you will heal for 32 percent of your health immediately so faster than you can probably even realize that you just got hit and you're at half hp you're the game's gonna just put you back up already to 82 percent so basically the logic is if you just want to survive big fucking hits and then have a ton of life recovery and this to protect us from big chunks and basically our hp is a roller coaster and we just don't die really good amulet probably my favorite amulet in the game right now i don't even think it's close might be my favorite item in the game and then vent doors you know get what you can afford quantity rarity this belt was very specific for this i was really lacking in strength and dex so i got tier one strength fractured i qualityed the attributes with a thing called an intrinsic catalyst 
which increases the percentage you get from attributes. And then I use Shrieking Essences of Dexterity again, same thing if I can remember. I'm pretty sure it's Sorrow, and I'm Shrieking Essence of Sorrow. And I just rolled it until I had a good life roll, and I just crafted a Chaos Res on it. I don't need the Lightning Res, I just, I just wanted the Chaos Res. But yeah, just Attribute Belt, good life. The flasks, uh, I would get these exact flasks that I have here, gain three charges when hit. You're getting hit by so much shit, right? So you're just, your flasks are permanently on. So these exact flasks, uh, poison immune at this point. Uh, I don't think that's really negotiable. Now, if your gear is not as good as mine, for whatever reason, I do have a backup plan. You can get a small chaos jewel over here if you want. And this will get you a lot tankier. You, you know, you'll gain more chaos res. This gives you a lot of chaos res and stuff, but I don't know, maybe it's out of your price range. For now, I'm just gonna leave it off. But um, you know, if you need chaos res, this is, in my opinion, the easiest solution is to just get an added small chaos res roll. You absolutely need a corrupted blood jewel. I have the pantheons and everything set up in a poison flask, so you need to run the pantheons I have ticked, and you need a corrupted blood jewel. It's mandatory. Otherwise, you're just gonna run, get bled, and die. Obviously, you don't need a really good jewel, but you know, just get a CB jewel. Down here we have energized armor. So the mage blood version, I don't recommend this because you're tanky enough. But on this version, because we're kind of hurting a little bit on the fist protection. Energized armor just makes it so that you get bonus armor from these nodes. This has reduced from crit, and then we're taking the fizz as taken as chaos. So it's just a really good combination used in a lot of builds that need armor. And obviously, like I said earlier, we need as much armor as we can get. Our armor is a little low on this version, but you know, it's, it's as good as we're gonna get. And then your charms, uh, two are for suppression, and then I recommend this. Endurance charge when hit, which means I would recommend you do not do monster steel charges because your endurance charges are pretty fucking important. And then if you're hurting on chaos res, you can get five chaos res per endurance charge. So what does this say? This says four endurance charges and it says 20 chaos res. I think that's insane value. Um, they're really cheap. I think I bought this for like 20 C. So you can, I just realized, uh, yeah, you can use this in the mid tier gear. Uh, the reason is because you want phasing on kill. So I'll have to move this part around, but yeah, phasing on kill is how I got to not using you know things like a quartz flask and stuff like that and be okay i definitely would recommend get that um especially if you're focused on not dying but if you're chilling you can get you know calling strike if you want it as an option for damage but yeah that's the mid tier uh not too complicated pretty straightforward the scepter is the only thing that actually takes a lot the rest is just fractures and you know essences as usual now mage blood uh nothing really changes in the skills uh the tree changes but the long story short is you're just spending more money if you have more money then just spend the money to get better gear the shield is kind of annoying. Realistically, with the way I have my math done, I only need tier two suppression on the shield and I can get like high suppression rolls on the charms to make it work. But chaos res just makes you tankier. And at this point I had the money. So I was like, fuck it. I can add a suffix to the shield I basically already had, right? So yeah, three max chaos res. I rolled this with shrieking envies until I hit tier two suppression. That's it. Not too complicated. It was a money sink though. I think I spent, I don't know, eight, nine div making the shield because it just took that many essences of envy. But yeah, get as much chaos res where you can and then as much HP as you can realistically get. Already talked about making the helmet. At this point, you know, you got money, so get some corruption. So you can get damage here if you want, but obviously I opted for, you know, HP. That's crazy. Hardcore player. Go to for HP. Uh, the gloves, pretty sure these are the same gloves as the last one. Um, uh, the boots, you can get plus two here and put your auras in there. You can get uh you can get suppression here as well if you're like really got unlucky on your suppression rolls but i had good suppression so i just went for six percent life this was only like a div uh defiance of destiny you know just better rolls better ventors mage blood at the time of this recording they're like 140 or something like that i found one uh right after i bought one and i was cringy actually you know what i probably showed that clip huh so yeah you should probably already know that yeah anyway flask copy the exact flask i have um it's armor and stuff and this is the wrong flask. No, this is the right flask. This is the right flask. But yeah, stun immune, shit ton of armor, immunity to poison. You don't even need 60% curse effect, but I took it just because I, you know, I just didn't want to risk it. But only like, I think like 55 is good enough. But yeah, curse immune, stun immune, shit ton of armor, rarity bonus, poison. At that point, you should have an answer for every ailment and be able to do what I did. So like I said, uh, the mange blood mentality at this point of the gear, you're just kind of getting more mods on stuff and you're kind of just not settling. So a lot of my jewels I spent 10 to 15 div on, you know, but I mean, hey, it's a mage blood version. So, you know, if you're looking to get options, this is what I did. Two cluster jewels, didn't have enough points to get the other widespread destruction, just damage, quad damage, uh, that which was taken with phasing, exposure extra, so it's just more damage, and then crit if you haven't crit recently. Any other options were just too expensive. You could get suppression and stuff on this, but this is what I could afford. 
your watcher's eye um every version of the watcher's eye you're probably gonna have you know fizz damage taken as lightning cold fire it's the same logic as stuff on your helmet right you just want to convert as much fizz to an element and then let your fourth vow kind of help protect you by converting that to chaos and yeah all that stuff and because chaos res is such a bitch i would recommend that you get a chaos res purity of elements um this was 35 div your other option like i said in the other one though is that if you want to you can run an added small passive and just give up some damage and maybe some hp somewhere and just get an added small chaos res jewel that can give you like 40 chaos res that's in the mid-tier pob uh in this exact area if you wanted to go see that if you already skipped to this part and the Zabakwa, I got a better one at this point. So I had plus one chaos res on my old version, but then I eventually opted for this. Uh, there's a whole multitude of videos you can watch on how to use this exact thing. I've tried to explain it before. And I just didn't feel like I did a good job within like five minutes. So if you really want to know how this works, I'd recommend another video. I just don't particularly think I'm good at this particular exp explanation. But uh, yeah, you know, fizz damage and armor because armor is such an important stat. And then I just got like chaos res on this um, and armor. I was looking for like a, a three chaos res one, couldn't find one, but it is what it is. I got double armor chaos res, so pretty good. It's like six div, which is only like one on the entire server though. But realistically, that's pretty much it. Um, I mean, like I said, DD is just, it's just one of those builds that I think it's just everyone has either heard or played or, or at some point learned about. So besides the nuances of gear, there's just not too much to go into, you know, like basic scepter, you know, just a shrieking essence of envy shield augment regal helmet quantity and then you know just shrieking as it's a sorrow gloves right so it's really not too complicated it's just the price of everything is just you know it goes up and up and up and up but it's really a, a straightforward build if you want to just strip it down to bare bones um it's really not too complicated it, it kind of just plays itself at a certain point in t16 but speaking of t16s like i promised the step after this is to explain the levels of juice i did and my and considering this is, you know, probably the last MF video I'm making for the league, right before I start practicing or, or getting ready to play the gauntlet, let's get to telling you about what I know on how to make Stygians and stuff like that kind of work, because if you're having trouble. All right, first of all, if you have a logout macro and you blow the Stygian Spire up and you do like way too much damage to it, if you're noticing, hey, it's dying, it's blowing, it's burning up, and then within a second it's below half HP, if you log out of the game and just log back in, more often than not, if you have a good connection, the spire will stop burning, and then when you walk in, it'll just shoot all the projectiles out and spawn the mobs. Speaking of spawning the mobs, so I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but sometimes you're doing the spire and it'll shoot only like one projectile, right? Or maybe two, but it should be able to shoot three or four. So sometimes this is a thing that I, I learned that can work is for whatever reason, maybe the game is just too crowded with monsters. So if you just run over to where the spire landed, right? The projectile run away from the spire so you don't kill it and just try to pull the mobs away and try to kill them. More often than not, if I only got like one spawn, I'll just kill a couple of those rares that spawned and then it'll start shooting like another projectile or two and then I'll just blow it up. So basically sometimes, I, I, I don't know, it seems like it just gets crowded or I can't shoot more projectiles for whatever reason. And so if I just grab the monsters, pull them away, blow them up, then it'll like make room, I guess, and it'll shoot more projectiles. But it works for me more often than not. And just between those two things, you know, the, the log out and that, I was able to get just like, I don't know, more rares out of my maps in general. Pretty easy. Uh, the other tip I have, I would actually recommend you don't put in things like Ritual. I would actually almost recommend you don't even put Winged Ambush in and just put Gilded Ambush on purpose. And the reason is because if you put too much stuff into a map, you'll actually delete abysses. So I actually just use Gilded Ambush and then I, I, I took points out of Ritual, for example. No Breach, none of that. Because abysses are where the money's at, especially in T16s. So I actually stripped down a lot. Unless it's Beyond or Abyss, I did not want it anymore. So I took everything out. I think I left a couple points into Harbies, but that's pretty much it. Uh, I put a couple points into, you know, just strong boxes, and that's all. So you were just focusing, I would just double down. I know in my older versions and a lot of people thought ritual and things like that or legion, but no, I, I, if those delete abysses and more often than that, it seems like they do, like you're expecting four and you only get three and you're like, wait, there's a ritual here. That's what happened. It deleted the abyss. So don't overflow it. You're focusing on abysses and beyond. Just get rid of all the other bloat and focus on what you're here to do. The next thing I would actually recommend that you maybe don't do cemetery. In my opinion, I only got maybe seven cards in the four days I was farming cemeteries. I was only playing for, you know, four hours a day. I, I didn't go crazy hard. I was pretty busy and I was not feeling well and just, you know, all that. But 
from my experience, Jungle Valley, I think you just get so many fortunate cards. It's a straightforward layout. I just got so few of the five div, five exalt cards. Like, don't get me wrong, I got them, but it was, you know, like once every like 20 maps, whereas every map in a Jungle Valley, I get fortunate cards. So I'm pretty sure fortunate cards drop in tier seven. Maybe double check me and tell me if I'm wrong. And if you don't know, the fortunate card is a divination card for uh, two divines. And specifically, if you're doing T16s, so I would absolutely recommend Jungle Valley because of the altars jungle valley boss does not exist so your altars will always have a high chance to roll quantity and things like that so in my opinion jungle valley pretty goaded those are the few things that i haven't mentioned and i didn't really hear a ton of people mention that helped me a lot to get a little bit more out of my maps all right to do progression i was thinking of doing this uh just by saying it briefly but i figured it'd probably be better to do it visually right so when i was doing tier four maps i had like no quant no nothing like that i was just rolling two proj four mods and i was throwing in a gilded abyss scarab and after a couple maps i started buying a few gilded reliquaries because you know i was able to afford it and i just did this until i had enough money to move on get my quant gear things like that in this tier, I started rolling for two prods, and like I said earlier, uh, hardcore is a mentality. How did I, you know, do all this stuff, you know, deathless? I'm running six mods. You just take more time rolling your maps. You know, don't do fizz as extra fire, cold, or lightning. Don't do less recovery unless, you know, it's a really juiced map because it's really annoying because you can't cast, you know, abilities consistently. You know, maybe you just roll with one damage mod. You know, that's it. That's, that's, I was comfortable more or less doing one damage mod and then like crit. In my opinion, crit is free. So roll like, you know, maybe one damage mod, you know, frenzy, things like that are fine. And it's just a mentality. Take your time to roll the maps. You know, I exalted my maps at this point to get six mod. And then I added, you know, the divination and then a ambush at this point. And then from progression, the cheapest into, you know, the most valuable and to the most expensive, you know, I added abyss once I, you know, did another 10 maps. I added it strong boxes, did another 10 maps. And then I had more than enough money at that point to go throw in beyond and from this point on i just use full sections and i don't have winged on me right now and i don't really want to whisper anybody to just buy some i'm probably done with this character in this project so winged abyss winged reliquary i would not say winged ambush for the i may have mentioned it before but basically you don't want to have strong boxes replace abysses so you want strong boxes but you don't want an abundance of them necessarily and then winged divination and then i went to jungle valley at this point same thing at this point, I was just not interested in doing any damage mods. No fizz is extra, nothing. Percent monster damage is probably the only one I'd have been okay with. Frenzy, you know, stuff like that. But that's it. Um, so I was just, you know, rolling these, six modding them, and then that's all. And then all of these are the same thing, right? Nothing particularly insane. You know, AOE, reduce crit. Crit, like I said, I think crit's more of just a free mod. We're completely element immune as long as you're paying attention. So you don't care about Ignite, you don't care about poison. Power charges don't care. Res, who gives a shit? You one shot a rare and it'll kill everything no matter what. If you take your time to roll your maps and, you know, actually focus on trying to not die and still getting, you know, six mods, then you'll be chilling, right? These are all like fine. They're all like 98% quant or 100%. Just, uh, yeah. And if, you, if you're if you fine rolling damage mods, then understand that you're rolling a lot of things all at once that will probably combine on some mob out there that will kill, probably kill you. But... I did it deathless, but that's this is how I did it. And so hopefully this gives you an idea of the levels that I went through, you know, when I was going zero to hero. Now, with all that being said, if you're still watching this for whatever reason, I've never done this before, but I do have a goal because I've, you know, made this channel up, you know, three weeks ago and it's already almost at a thousand subs. I'm going to actually have a goal like, hey, if you like this content, I've played PoE for 10 years. I'm going to be playing PoE for probably for another at least five years of my life. And I don't mind making, you know, build guys and things like that. So this is the same kind of content I'm probably going to do for five years, maybe a couple more fun videos and more projects, but that's pretty much it. So if you're interested in that, I would actually appreciate a sub at least until I get to a thousand subs. And then after that, I'm going to be honest, I won't really care about the number anymore. So this is probably the first time and maybe the last time I actually ever ask for a sub just so I can get to a thousand. And I think I'm like 150 off at the recording of this. But yeah, that's it for me. GG. Uh, I enjoyed this league. It was really fun. Maybe my second favorite league ever. Uh, my favorite is probably Delve. But that's just because the group play was really fun with me and some friends. And yeah, have a good one. Later.